Well, well, thank you, Claudia, and thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to uh, well, talk today, uh, where I'm going to try to summarize the efforts we have been doing within the, the F3 team, uh, trying to characterize the IMF variations in the environment of the, of the format cluster. So um, Daniel already uh, talked a bit about it, but I, I thought it was useful to start with a brief uh, introduction to the IMF. So uh, what is the IMF? Well, in short, it's just you know, the mass spectrum of stars at birth, so you have your uh, molecular cloud and it collapses on a star forming new stars so you can go to your favorite uh, star cluster and count how many stars you have uh, of different star masses. Uh, you build this system and then the shape of this system is uh, basically what we what we talk about the, the IMF, right? So how many stars you form uh, of a given star mass. Um, and to motivate the talk rather than going discussing the possible uh, universality of the IMF, I thought it was uh, maybe more useful for this uh, conference to talk about this kind of three key points that I've um, highlighted here. So the first one is uh, the fact that the IMF is um, it's a basic ingredient or assumption, actually, depending on how you look at it, of any separation model, right? So uh, anytime that you are trying to get information out of a photometric measurement or a, a spectrum of a galaxy, and there is an, assum an assumption in the IMF that is going to affect uh, or somehow modulate uh, the interpretation of your results. Um, the second point, it's kind of related to the first one, but I think it's also an important one is the fact that the IMF, and in particular for well, galaxies where you cannot resolve in the other stars, um, it lets you go from uh, light to mass. It lets you do, in a way, it lets you do astrophys uh, astrophysics um, because basically any um, measurement, that mass measurement that you can get from a galaxy, I don't know, star formation rate of a galaxy, the star mass of a galaxy, uh, every time you measure a mass from the light of a galaxy, from a, yeah, based on photometry, there's also an assumption there on, on the IMF, right? So, Doing astrophysics in a way, it's also really linked to the IMF uh, when you are dealing with some result separations. And um, and the last one, it's kind of more related to like the physics itself, but um, it's also the fact that the IMF is somehow regulating the baryonic cycle in galaxies. It's not only like a tool that we uh, put in our models, but it also controls the number of massive stars that you put in there, and therefore uh, the effect uh, of um, stellar feedback, the amount of uh, stellar ejecta that you put in your galaxy. Um, and for the low mass stars, those very low mass stars, they, they live for uh, many giga years and they lock the material and they, in a way, also control the, the mass budget that you have in your galaxy, right? So the IMF, um, both from a practical point of view and from a more physical point of view, it's kind of uh, key to understand galaxies where we cannot resolve individual stars. And, um, and being that important, there's been a lot of work uh, recently trying to measure the IMF uh, in unresolved galaxies. I'm going to be just talking about the uh, measurement based on, on absorption spectra. And um, and the thing is that I was saying at the beginning, uh, the IMF has an effect on the spectra, uh, but this effect is usually uh, small of the order of a few percent, and it's highly degenerated with other quantities like the H, the metallicity, the abundance ratios of different elements. Uh, so it's really hard to measure. That's why we need really good data, and we uh, need also really good models. And uh, usually what we do is to go for this simple quiescent galaxies where the separations can be uh, usually assumed to be like coeval to be well represented by a single edge, single metallicity. Um, and in that way, we can uh, measure the AMF more easily. Um, on the other hand, this, this dealing with very old separations means that we are only left with stars between I don't know, 0.08 or 0.1 solar masses to one solar mass. So uh, IMF measurement based on these uh, absorption features or on the shape of the spectra are only probing a uh, narrow mass range. So uh, throughout the talk, I'm gonna, gonna, if I talk about variations in the, the IMF, it's going to be only on the low mass end of the IMF, between point, yeah, point 0.2 solar masses and point 0.9 solar masses mainly, uh, because this is based on, on the optical. Um, so what do we know about it? Uh, well, I think the main result that we are more or less more secure about is the fact that the, this and that the IMF varies uh, in more massive galaxies. So if you go to more massive quiescent galaxies, they tend to have a steeper IMF. They tend to have an excess of uh, an enhanced fraction of low mass stars. Um, and then when you go to uh, galaxies with lower stellar masses with lower velocity expression, you get the IMF that are closer to the Milky Way. And this is exemplified here in this figure by Francesco Lavarbera in 2013, where uh, it's showing pretty much this, that you, know, you get this higher uh, gamma parameter, which means like a steeper IMF when you go to more massive galaxies. Um, and then uh, it seems that these enhanced fractions of low mass stars is mostly, mostly concentrated in the central regions. So uh, it's not the whole galaxy, but just in the center of these massive galaxies where we see this enhanced fraction of low mass stars. 
And uh, this, I think, also sort of a more robust uh, result, at least for the majority of massive galaxies, it seems to be a gradient. Uh, so well, on the left, I'm showing a figure that we did in 2015 with a, one massive galaxy in particular in yellow. And as you, you can see, uh, this enhanced fraction of uh, low mass stars, this deep IMF, are just in the central point two uh, effective radii. And, um, and on the right, uh, uh, a figure, a more recent figure from, from Tanja of 20, uh, based on, on Manga, where they also find uh, like a systematic radiance in, in, the, in the IMF uh, of, of, the, of Manga's uh, galaxies. And the final point of the, this kind of brief introduction is the, the fact that the IMF variations, um, as also Daniel said, uh, they seem to track somehow changes in, in metallicity. So uh, we first found this in, in Khalifa in 2015. And, um, and somehow it seems that either more metal rich galaxies or more metal regions, more metal rich regions in galaxies are those that exhibit uh, this enhanced fraction of low mass stars. Those are usually in the center, and that's why we find this, this gradient. And the things that uh, we, I think at this point, we're also almost sure that the metallicity alone is not able to fully capture the variety of IMF variations that we see out there. And there is now plenty of work showing that uh, we need more than metallicity. And that in some extreme cases, metallicity is just not, uh, not able to do this. Uh, so that's kind of the background when we started the, this, uh, uh, the IMF side of the F3D project. And uh, well, uh, for you to know, so it, uh, the F3D is a survey uh, with MUSE and well, it's a survey of the former cluster. That's what I'm showing here on, on the left. And then uh, on the right, you can see part of the team. And this is a picture that we took at ISO. Uh, maybe three, four years ago, and there is some very so related faces that you and that may, might be familiar to you. But um, the idea of this is like a uh, like uh, is a like magnitude limited survey of uh, the Fornax cluster uh, with MUSE. So we have 33 galaxies, uh, some of them observed with even three pointings. Uh, 22 of those galaxies are classified as cyclic types, so in principle we can use this. Use this uh, Single SSP, uh, single separation uh, analysis approach uh, with stellar masses from 10 to 9 to 10 to 11. And, um, and this is the first talk or result from the FD this week, but there's going to be uh, some more. So Adriano is going to talk, I think, and then uh, Thomas, Katia, and, and Enrica, they, they, all, they all are going to present the results during the week. So, uh, so stay, stay tuned for those. And, um, and uh, yes, well, the idea is just to, to look at these features in the spectrum uh, where. Where, the, where there is information uh, about the, the, the shape of IMS. So the idea is to uh, look at uh, very specific features where we, the information of the IMS is contained and fit not only for the IMS, but also for the age, uh, the metallicity, the magnesium iron in this case, and um, all simultaneously. And, uh, and here I'm showing, yeah, I think this, this is uh, uh, kind of a schematic representation of our fitting approach. Uh, so you have like the different indices in there. In blue, I think, yeah, in blue, that's the data, and in, and in black is the best fitting model from a random feature, like a random uh, spectra in, in, in the survey. And as you can see, we're, I think we're doing a, a good job at fitting the data. Um, before um, getting into the, into the results, uh, I thought it was uh, useful to, you know, to show this, this figure, because this is how we used to deal with, uh, with IMF gradients uh, in the past. This is how we used to study I have variations, and this is just like a 1D uh, long slit based uh, gradient, uh, or you can do also like a, some sort of a, uh, stacking in, in annually as we did in Khalifa, or as uh, uh, Tanya did in, in uh, many others in, in Manga. Uh, but now with Muse, we're moving from uh, gradients like this to something like this, right? So uh, the, the, the step forward in quality is, is uh, it's impressive, and we can do many more things. So this is not the IMF, but the metallicity map. And, and as you can see, there is a nice metal rich central part and a sort of elongated uh, high metallicity disk in there. Uh, and you can see this, uh, the footprint of the three muse pointing in there. And uh, so this is the metallicity and, and this is the IMF map. So uh, the metric that we're using is slightly different, but uh, in any case, higher values of this parameter mean uh, steeper IMF uh, values of more low mass stars or relatively more low mass stars. And as you can see, as we already knew before, the, this enhanced fraction of low mass stars is just concentrated in the central region of this massive galaxy. And uh, if you paid attention, there is also a difference in, the, in how the, the metallicity and the, and the IMF maps are distributed. Uh, so you can actually do something uh, which we thought it was interesting. So uh, the background image now is the, just the urban image of the, of the galaxy and the, the lines 
the solid lines the, are the ISO, ISO metallicity contours and the, and the dashed line are the ISO uh, IMF contours. And as you can see, although both metallicity and IMF are varying with radius, it seems that the metallicity is more in a disk-like structure. It's actually following the, the, the cold orbits in this galaxy, whereas the, the IMF is in a more lesser, following less along these shapes. And uh, it seems to be sort of more coupled to the, um, to the warm component, orbital component of, of this galaxy. Uh, so this one galaxy is the first paper that we did, but we have many more. I'm just, I'm just showing two of these, uh, of the nice examples that we have in, in the survey. So on the top part are the metallicity map and on the bottom part are the IMF map. And for example, on the left, you can see a nice John galaxy with a, even like a next shape like structure that we think is because of the orbits in a bar like uh, on a bar feature. But it's also imprinted on the metal on the not only in the IMF, on the metallicity map but also on the IMF map. So there is all again this seems to be like a like a correlation between the orbital structure uh, uh, that gets imprinted somehow on the on the IMF and on the separation maps in general. And on the right there is another example of an S0 galaxy with a super nice high metallicity disk, and that is also means uh, slightly higher IMF values as you see in, can see in the bottom panel. And if you pay attention, there is some features in or some dips in the in the thin disk that you see in the in the IMF, and those are actually real features. Those correspond those low, relatively low IMF values in the disk. Those correspond to uh, relatively relatively low, um, uh, relatively young ages. So there is um, a lot of of these two dimensional structures that were completely missing if we just do uh, one D gradients in in these galaxies. And, um, and here's another example uh, with a nice galaxy again. Uh, showing a bar that you can see as an enhanced metallicity and a ring there and, um, and the IMF maps pretty much following the, the same um, the same variations as in the metallicity. Um, and uh, yeah, what I want to, to say with this is that, uh, you know, all this structure, we're really missing them if we just go for, for one degree. And um, now this is just in the other galaxies, but you can also take um, the whole, okay, thank you, Claudia. Uh, the whole, all the data points that we have. So we have a few thousand points per galaxy and you can just throw them all together. And uh, we, again, at least for the F3 survey, we recover uh, the relation between the metallicity and the IMF, as you can see here, uh, with a nice correlations as uh, one would expect. Uh, so more metal regions, more metal rich regions in, in F3 tend to have also this enhanced fraction of low mass stars. And then when you go to low metallicity, uh, you recover the Milky Way like uh, IMF. And the scatter in the low mass end of the and the low metallicity regime, uh, it could be due because it's harder to measure the metallicities at low IMF values because uh, the effect of the IMF becomes here more degenerated with other quantities. Uh, but we also found some secondary correlations on on the um, at the low metallicity regime. So uh, for low metallicities, uh, there seems to be an additional correlation on top of the main uh, IMF metallicity one, uh, suggesting that at, uh, at fixed metallicity uh, regions with higher alpha over iron um, tend to exhibit uh, steeper IMF to, to exhibit an enhanced fraction of, of low mass stars. Um, so magnesium over iron here, you can think as a proxy for the star formation time scale. You can think as a, as a specific star formation rate value. So somehow, it might be that the star formation rate at birth of this of this uh, star population uh, got somehow impeded on the on the IMF value. And um, and just to conclude, um, well, we we use data MUSE to to measure the IMF uh, the full two D IMF uh, and star formation map for twenty three galaxies in the format cluster. Uh, I think one of the key results is that the star population maps that have uh, a rich uh, two dimensional structure that we are completely missing if we are just using. Uh, long slit or radial average uh, gradients and um, and that the metallicity at least in F3 they seem to follow uh, IMF variation seems to follow changes in metallicity although as we sort of knew already it's not enough to explain the full range of IMF variations and um, and some secondary dependencies on the IMF seem to emerge mainly due to changes in the orbit, orbit, orbital structure of galaxies or on the on the actual uh, magnesium and iron on the time scale uh, for the formation of the extrapolations. And I think that's all actually it should be a last slide, but yeah, no, nothing, nothing too important. Thank you.